Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Genesis Mega Drive game dev tutorial. In the previous lesson we learned how to make a map using 16 tile and in this lesson we're going to explore one of the neat features of using 16 tile and that is being able to use multiple palettes within a single background layer. Just to give everyone a quick recap on the Mega Drive's palette. The system allows us to display four palettes at the same time to has PAL 0, PAL 1, PAL 2 and PAL 3. Now PAL 0 has 16 colours and the other three palettes have 15 colours each giving a total of 61 colours. You're only allowed to assign one palette per sprite or per background tile. As you may recall from previous lessons in regular SGDK we normally assign a single palette to a whole background layer. But one of the advantages of using 16 tile is that we can assign palettes on a tile by tile basis so in theory a single background layer could use all four palettes with each tile using one of the four palettes. In order to demonstrate this technique to you I'm going to use the background for the village in Beyond Oasis. If we examine the village background we can see that there are a total of 29 colours. In order to use all the colours displayed we're going to have to split this into two different palettes and I'm going to have to determine which assets in the map, which graphics go with which palette. The first step to do this is to create two separate tile sets, each with their own palette. Since I'm just doing this for the purpose of a tutorial, I haven't spent too much time uh, carefully getting every single asset from the map. I've just created a selection of, of for both palettes and we're just going to use it as a demonstration. And also I've just taken the palette directly from the root graphic. So I haven't converted it to the 32 step palette that I said in the previous lesson we need to use with 16 tile. Thankfully, apart from a couple of the flowers, the colors actually transfer okay, even without changing the palette. So it should work fine for our demonstration purposes today. As always when creating any graphics for the console make sure that the height and width of any asset is a multiple of 8. Also make sure that the colour mode is selected as indexed. Make sure that the file is saved as a PNG and for anything you're going to put in 16 tile make sure that the second 16 by 16 square has the palette manually drawn out one by one in order in which the palette appears in the palette index on the left. Next up we're going to have to combine these two tile sets into a single tile set which we're then going to use in 16 tiles. So I'm going to take our tile set that uses the PAL 0 palette and simply expand it a bit to give it room. And then I'm going to copy over and add the assets from the palette from the tile set that use PAL 1. When doing the copying and pasting be very careful to make sure that the, um, the assets still line up in the grid for the 16x16 16 16 tile grid. And you can see here that the colors changed because obviously this um, these assets are now using the PAL 0 palette. So if we switch between the two, you can see there's been a change in color. Actually, the PAL 0 uh, palette applied to this doesn't look too bad. I think it looks pretty nice, but let's see if we can get it close to the original color instead. As I copy the palette from PAL 1 and apply it to our tile set here, you can see that the result isn't as we expect. We would expect when we apply the PAL 1 palette for it to look like for the, the tree and the fence, the assets we just brought over, to look like they do in the other tile set, but they don't. So something's obviously gone wrong. So we're going to have to change this. And there's a bit of a knack to doing this. So I'm going to show you it now. Before we copy and paste the tile set, which uses the PAL 1 palette into our uh, tile set using the PAL 0 palette, we first have to take the PAL 0 palette and paste it into the PAL 1 tile set and then we can copy the assets from the PAL 1 tile set and, and then paste them into the the main tile set that we're going to put into 16 tile. Doing it this way means that the palette indexes don't get messed up and now if we just go back to our one here, our PAL 1 palette, we just control Z to get the original palette back. Now if we copy this PAL 1 palette into our other tile set here, we should see that there we go. The actual assets we pasted in are looking fine. Obviously the assets to the left, the original PAL 0 assets are going to look a bit funky, but I think they look quite nice actually. But when we uh, when we import this tile set into, into 16 tile, we're going to apply either the PAL 0 or PAL 1 palette to each of the different tiles so we can control that so now that we have our tile set we can we got make sure that the palette indexes are working okay we can now save this and we can transfer it into 16 tile actually before we do let me just delete this little palette here because obviously we got already got the we are using one single tile set now and the palette's already defined at the beginning of the tile set in the second tile so let's now say this is a png file so it's ready to be imported and used in 16 tile
One final thing we need to do is to save the palette for PAL1. So we're just going to do save palette here, call this whatever you want and make sure the file type is put as a PAL file. After opening up 16 tile, the next step we want to do is to save the project. So give it whatever name you like and save. Now we have to tell 16 tile which tile set we want to use. So go over to tile set and hit the add the plus button and then click the down arrow to do the download and simply select the tile set we just created. You can see that our tile set has been successfully uploaded and as I said before I didn't use the 32 step palette I didn't convert it to that so some of the assets for example the flower just above the right hand corner of the house is looking a black color rather than the color it was before but apart from that the other colors seem to have transferred okay so just for demonstration purposes I think that'll do fine for this particular project. While the PAL Zero palette has automatically been taken from the tile set we uploaded we have to tell 16 tile about the PAL1 uh, palette that we want to use so go to the top right hand corner there and click on that little symbol then go to PAL1 and then simply select the palette we saved before and then that should be loaded okay. If I quickly switch between PAL0 and PAL1 you can see that it looks pretty much as it did in A sprite so now let's go ahead and we can create our actual level map. First we need to tell 16 tile to use the tile set we just imported and then we can do the usual um, pasting stuff that I taught in the previous lesson so consult that if you've forgotten anything here I've to put the house upside down by mistake I flipped it uh, vertically but we can simply put it back the right way too and as with last lesson I'm just gonna pretty much paste these pretty randomly it's not gonna be the prettiest map in the world but it'll do the job to, for demonstration purposes for this tutorial. Whenever you're dealing with original assets of games like this, um, you notice some things that maybe you didn't quite focus on before and you can see that compared to Zelda Link to the Past and also to Crusader of Senti, the way they've done the design of tiles here is actually more organically so it's not, it doesn't look initially like it fits the uh, square, a tile bar tile um, pattern but obviously it does in order to fit into VRAM but <laughs> you can see that I've not done the best job of selecting the correct assets so they don't quite line up properly when I put them next to each other so you'd have to be a bit more careful if you're going to do this you want to do this properly but as I said for this uh, to, for the purposes of this tutorial I think it'll be fine and it doesn't look the best but it doesn't look too bad. Now that we've put down some of the PAL0 palette uh, assets let's start putting some of the the assets that we're going to use with the second palette with PAL1 so I'm just going to put some trees down here some fences and this particular thing I'm not sure what it is I think it's supposed to be like a, a bench or some kind of a storage thing I'm not sure but let's put a few of those down so that we can then go ahead and we can demonstrate how we can assign the palette to each different tile. I think that will do for the map design so now let's look at the palette so on the left hand side you can see you have this 0, 1, 2 and 3 now each of these applied to the different palettes now 0 is already applied automatically to everything so we don't need to apply that we just need to make the application if we want to use 1, 2 or 3 now we simply select 1 in this case and we can just left click and we can just paste the power 1 wherever we want it so obviously we're going to use it for these trees and for these fences so we can simply hold the left mouse button and then then paste the one, uh, the PAL1 over whichever whichever tile is going to use the, the second palette, it's going to use PAL1. It's worth noting here that I've been careful with how I've chosen the first color in the PAL0 palette. So I've made the first color the, the green of the grass and so even obviously the first color of the of the PAL1 is also the, that green of the grass but because it's PAL1 that's going to be transparent so it's going to show through the PAL0 is going to show through that and it's going to be the the green of the grass too so that's why so you have to be careful with that make sure that when you, you're applying remember PAL1 remember the first color in that palette is going to be transparent so you have to make sure that whatever appears underneath that will be the first 
the first um, color of PAL0. So make sure they're the same if you want to do this kind of map. Just for fun, let's just apply the PAL1 to the house as well. So I think we saw in A-Sprite, they looked a bit funky that way, but just to demonstrate how this works, that we can we can apply you know the PAL1 or PAL2 or PAL3 to every one. Since we haven't assigned anything to PAL2 or PAL3, that would just be the same as PAL0 as PAL1 was before we actually loaded the the palette that we created so we can make this uh, PAL1 just to give it a weird color we can do the same to the path and then once that's done we will set we will save then export and then we will put this into our SGDK as a program once you're satisfied everything is done we can simply export the tile set and the tile map and the palette too so click the export button you can see that we have uh, everything here and we can simply put this into the res folder of our SGDK project and the project we're going to be using is the same one we used in the previous lesson so we're going to simply transfer the assets over and we can put this new background in with making only a few changes. You can see that the tile set from this Beyond Oasis project is the same name as the one for the Crusader of Center we did, so we can simply have it replaced. And unlike the, the Crusader of Center project we did in the previous lesson, we need to actually add the, the PNG of the from the palette folder as well, because we're going to need to create the um, PAL1. We're going to need to add that to it and do the same for PAL02, so we have these two palettes. So we have all our assets into the res folder here. You can see that the the two palette ones are simply just the that they simply showed the palettes that we, we're going to be using because we're going to use two palettes rather than just one so it's a bit more complex now let's go to resources.res file and we simply need to update this so that the assets we've put into our res folder are actually loaded onto the rom We're going to copy and paste the palette code here and we're going to make sure we have the uh, both palettes represented but noted onto the ROM. So again, we're gonna make a few changes here, do a bit of renaming so that both PAL1 and PAL0 are on this ROM. Thankfully, there's not too much we have to do in main.c. We simply have to make sure that both PAL0 and PAL1 are also uh, represented. They're, they're put into the code. So make sure you make the changes to reflect what we did in the resources.res uh, file. And once that has been done, all we need to do next is simply to change the variables which determine the map size because the size of the map is in this time is different to what we did last time. And with that done, we can simply save and compile and have a look at our ROM. As the link moves around the map, I think we can see everything's looking as we expected. So that tree there, we obviously forgot to put as PAL1, so it's using the PAL0 tile set. The house at the very beginning was using the PAL1 tile set, so it looks a bit funky. These two trees here, and the fence is using PAL1, that's used, the house using PAL0. So everything's looking as we expected it to look. And uh, normally in, oh, actually this bit here, I think... Uh, where Link is right now, that looks like we've got a little strip. Maybe we forgot to change the palette on that one. Let's go back to 16 tile and take a look if that's the case. So if we just zoom in here, ah, we can see that I forgot to do this as PAL1. So that's why that those particular tiles are using the PAL0 tile set. In my experience programming the Castlevania Symphony of the Night Mega Drive game, what normally happens is that we use PAL0 for the far background and then for the foreground we use a combination of PAL0 and PAL1 and then for PAL2 we use for example the player character Alucard plus a few sub weapons and so on and maybe one or two enemies too if they can use the same palette and PAL3 is reserved for enemies. Using the four palettes we have available to us in an intelligent and efficient way is essential to creating a good looking Mega Drive game. However you decide to arrange the palettes is up to you and I think 16 tile is a very good tool to achieving the best result.
I will include a download link for the tiles that I use in today's lesson in the video description below, as well as a link sprite. So if you want, you can try and recreate your own uh, Legend of Oasis map. For the artistic among you, I'll, I'll encourage you just to use the 32 step palette and create your own backgrounds. And if you do make anything that you think is quite impressive, then I look forward to seeing it. Feel free to email it to me and maybe I'll feature it in a future video. Okay, so I think that just about wraps things up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then please subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you want to support the channel further, I have a Patreon account. You won't go unrewarded. And until next time. Farewell.